Hello in the next episode. In today's video I'm going to repair Nintendo Switch which came in for the orange screen of that. So today we're going to find out what caused that the Nintendo Switch has got orange screen. Okay, so let's fix it. Today's video is sponsored by PCBWay. PCBWay is a company that offers PCB prototype and assembly services. Wherever you are a hobbyist, a student or a professional, you can find the best solution for your PCB design and production needs. One of the features that makes PCB Way stand out is their community section where you can share, explore and remix open source hardware projects, especially for PCB and uh, 3D printed projects. You can browse through more than 40 categories of project branches with almost tens of thousands of projects submitted by other PCB wares. You can also get commissions when your shard designs are being sold. PCBWay.com You can find the link in the video description. And now let's get back to our switch. Alright, so as you can see, this is our hero today. And let's plug the battery. And let's power on the switch. So as you can see at the beginning, we've got normal Nintendo logo. Some of the cases are that you can have orange screen straight away. But in this case, you can see logo and after a while, we should see orange screen of that. And yes, so what can cause this issue? It's a probably, you know, the Wi-Fi chip issue. So we need to replace it to make it work. But first, what I'm going to do, I'm going just to desolder this chip, clean the parts, and then I'm going to power on the switch so we can have a look if this power is up properly or no. And then I can solder the new Wi-Fi chip back on their place. So let's remove that chip. All right, so where is the Wi-Fi chip? It's under the NAND memory. I just removed this. Let's go under the microscope. All right, so it looks like someone has tried to reflow this chip. I can see signs of the flux around. So reflow didn't help. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going just to scratch the PCB board. Not so deep, because this chip is going to be replaced anyway. So what I'm doing now, I'm doing some marks on the PCB board to help me solder this chip in the proper place back. I know that here we've got the dot, this is the mark how to place the chip, but you know, the best way is to scratch it a little bit. Okay, that's fine. All right, so let's remove this chip. So I'm going to blow on this side here this direction is the best one because here you've got some important connectors like lcd connector this is the nand memory connector here you've got sd card connector but this is i can easily replace it better than or you know what uh, the best option will be here yeah i think definitely this is the best direction so i can blow from here here and i want i won't melt anything or damaged so 470 degrees and let's get rid of this chip okay let's add some flux let's mix our solder with the manufactured solder and let's clean the parts okay all right so now i'm going to connect the NAND memory this is just to check if the problem is still on the motherboard or maybe there's no problem at all we will see now yes the console can work without the wi-fi i'm just connecting all necessary flexi tapes one speaker this is not necessary but and you know what? i'm just going to connect the flexi tapes okay let's plug the battery and let's press the power button and see what will happen now all right, so we've got Nintendo logo so far. Oh, the battery is dead. But before wasn't dead. Well, there's no time to charge it now, so I'm going to plug my fully charged battery. Because we just need to see if there is any difference. All right, press the power button. Nintendo logo. And now we can see second Nintendo logo before it was nothing. Before it was just blank screen and after a while, uh, yeah, I see. All right, I cannot press because the game card reader is not connected. So that's why I connected, you know, the sliders flexi tape. 
So as you can see, Nintendo Switch is fully working without the chip. And this is the internet, and it's you should have oh no error message, nothing. One more thing: if I disconnect the Joy Cons, you know it it won't detect you know the chip. That's why the wireless won't work. But this is the chip for wireless and Bluetooth. So next step is to solder the new chip. So let's disconnect everything back again and solder a new chip under the microscope. All right, so first what I need to do, I'm going just to check this trace if I break this. But I don't think so, I just scratched the board. You see, we've got continuity here, so we can hear the beep. And one more here, but this is not very, you know, urgent. And as you can see, these marks, they will help me to position this chip, to align this chip to the lines. Okay, so I've got brand new chips. I know that they are not brand new, because... There is no brand new Wi-Fi chips on the market. The most of them are, you know, harvested from the broken switches. Yeah, this is the new chip. It's already rebolted, but I'm not sure if it's properly rebolted. Look at this. We got two bowls, and this is the the biggest problem. You know, when you buy the chips on the the best way is to harvest them from the you know donor board. But if you don't have any, you have no choice. You need to buy the new one. But five of them, let's check the next one. I always check the balls. Sometimes I even reboil them by myself. You know, it's not difficult. Yeah, this one looks better. Okie dokie. So let's apply some flops on the pads. All right, so now I'm going to set up my temperature for 400. 70 and a flow about 25 and 30 because i don't want to blow this up as you can see the marks are very helpful all right so we need to clean this we need to wait a little bit to cool down connect the non-memory assemble it a bit and we need to test it All right, so this is the moment of true. Let's press the power button. We got first logo. We got second logo. Okay, I forgot about this. So let's attach the Joy-Con. And what do you think? Because now, if I go there, you can have some problem with the internet. So. First, I'm going just to try on the Joy-Cons and I can see that something is wrong with it. See? So if I go to the internet, probably it won't work. And we've got exactly the same situation. It looks like the chip it wasn't soldered properly or the chip can be faulty or fake ones because you never know with those, with those chips, you know. So no difference, no Bluetooth, no Wi-Fi, nothing. I'm going to solder a new chip. Okay, so first, I'm, what I'm going to do, I'm going to just to reflow it one more time. This time, a little bit different option. I'm going just to reflow it from the bottom, like this. All right, should be good. Let's check now. Still nothing. All right, so this chip is fake. That's why I don't like the jobs with the Wi-Fi chip. Because firstly, you can't get brand new chip. They're always in used condition, rebolt. So you never know if they are good or no. So how can I tell this chip is good? So I'm not going to try another chip from this batch. I'm putting this back. Also, the chip not properly rebolt. And this time, just going to find here. We've got some firmware issue, not fixable. So maybe I will take the chip of this. So this is my motherboard. So I'm going to use the one from my donor board. So I think they are always the best. You know, never had any issue 
with the ones from the donor board but what if you don't have any so this is this is the problem the main problem okay so let's remove this chip first let's go under the microscope look soldering iron All right, 240. Okay, one more time, 240. Okay, looks all right. This is our Wi-Fi chip. All right, now 390 degrees, airflow 50. All right, so the, chip, so the chip is clean now, and let's test it now. All right, so this is the moment of truth. I'm going to turn the logo again. Oh, I completely forgot about the battery. The battery is flat. Okay, so the new battery is connected. Let's check now. Whoa, I think it's going to work, because this time, you know, the second Nintendo logo was a little bit shorter than previously. Okay, first test. No. All right. So this is not a good sign. And still the same. You see, it's still the same. What is wrong with them? You know, I didn't connect the band. You know, the antennas. But I don't think. I don't think it's the, this is the reason. So, you know, Joy Cons from the short distance they should work even without the the antenna. Now we've got antenna connected. And whoa, so now we've got connection. All right, so our chip is working now. Let's check the internet. Hmm, Bluetooth is working fine, but not the Wi Fi. I just try, you know, to connect to the Wi-Fi networks in the front of my router and still the same. So now we got Bluetooth working, but Wi-Fi is not working. System update, the system version is 13.2.0. Quite old. I'm just thinking if the format can help, but I don't think so. Let's, let's try. Factory reset this console. Something is wrong with the left slider. All right, I think I found the problem. And the tape, ribbon tape is cracked here. I'm not sure if you can see, but here is a crack. And that's why it's not detecting, you know, the Joy-Con. Okay, so let's replace the slider. I've got some donor switches, so I'm going to take one from here. Okay, so now should be all right. So let's test it. And we still have no internet connection. So factory reset actually didn't help at all. And this is not the first time when I've got so many problems with them. I was wondering if the left Joy-Con... No, yeah. The left Joy-Con need to be charged. Because I was thinking, you know, that why it can connect, you know, with the right Joy-Cons by Bluetooth. And why not the left Joy-Con? But I think this is because it's got very flat battery. Yeah, the controller is completely dead, but let's try my fully charge, I think. And yes, this one is working wirelessly. Alright, but the problem is still not solved. So the solution to re factory reset the console is no good. It's no good, because it didn't help us. We have still no internet connection. If we can't see any networks here, that factory reset won't help us. Alright, I'm going to reflow this chip one more time. Because, you know, I can see, because previous chip wasn't working at all. It was completely dead. This one is better because, you know, it's the Bluetooth is working. But Wi-Fi, still no. Okay, so let's reflow the chip one more time. All right, so I'm going to reflow the chip from the bottom. Again, 470 degrees. I'm going to apply some more clocks. All right, so as you can see, look what I notice here. So I think this can be the reason why there was no internet connection. I don't know. 
Let's fix this. No, I haven't noticed this cheap. It's got some mark, oh, but it's just the paint. Oh, I don't know what it's done. I thought the chip was damaged. Oh, but it's not damaged. This is another shrine. All right, so this is the moment of true. Another one. All right, the Bluetooth still works, but the internet connection is still no good. All right, I'll leave it this for a while. Probably we'll come back tomorrow for this job. I'm going to replace one more time the chip, the one from the donor boards. And if it's still the same, this is the end of my job. I'm giving up. We will try to do this job one more time. And, and it looks absolutely fine, you know? So I'm going just to assemble it and we will see. Fingers crossed. Let's check the Joy-Con. Straight away. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. And yes, finally we've got it. Finally we've got it. All right. Spent ages, you know, to fix it. <laughs> But let's check if we can connect to our uh, Wi-Fi. Probably I typed wrong with the password. Yes, 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 yes. All right, so as you can see, everything is connected properly. We've got the internet, so the switch has been fixed. Uh, it was a battle. I spent about maybe two, three days trying to fix it and finally all right so the problem with the wi-fi chips are that they can only be in use condition so you never know you can order hundreds of them from china and they all can be faulty you never know next problem can be you know the chip that it make it work it comes from you know the nintendo switch oled so i removed from the oled one and reboot it and solder this here and it looks like it's perfectly fine okay so thank you for watching as you could see it was an easy job i spent about two days to fix it uh not day after day it was like one week break because i had more important things to do and like i said two days and finally i got it fixed what i can say about nintendo switch uh, wi-fi uh, chips they are very sensible for the high temperature. And I think that I made some mistakes at the beginning because I was uh, in a rush. And I wanted to, you know, finish this job as soon as possible. But probably I used uh, too much temperature, too high temperature. And it killed the ICs. But you know, the source I got them from, you never know, it's from China. Half of the chips that are fake, so... They were in use condition, already revolved in the package. So they could be also faulty, who knows. But what I can say, just use the low temperature, not too high. Just like about 380 degrees should be all right. All right, so what I can ask you is to press the subscribe button at the bottom of this video. It will encourage me to uh, make another videos, maybe more often, we will see. But anyway, thank you for watching and see you next time.